Hello, everybody. I've been doing a show with John Young of The Chucky News. It's a live broadcast. It's free. Anybody can watch it. And we also have a recorded version that goes up on the Dishucky News YouTube channel of music from certain decades. Last week, we did the music of the 50s. And then yesterday, we did the music of the 60s. Next week, it's going to be the music of the 70s. And it's kind of an educational thing. And it's really a cool exercise for me to really see where music came from. Some stuff I'm not sure about. Some stuff I'm very sure about, and that's because I was there to experience it. And, you know, when you're programming music, when you're playing 50s music, typically you're playing 50s and 60s music, you can kind of do that. People say the 50s kind of ended when Buddy Holly died, but for our purposes as mobile DJs, it's okay to do 50s and 60s combined sets. Same with 60s and 70s, and to some extent you can do 70s and 80s. But I feel like decades do matter. I'll give you two examples. One I didn't experience, one I did. I was born in 71. So I didn't experience that abrupt 60s cutoff, but I know what it was, and it was the Altamont Free Concert, December, I think it was the 6th of 1969. They had Woodstock earlier that year, and that was like a peace and love fest. So then it brings us into December 6th, 1969, the Altamont Free Concert. Cooler lineup than Woodstock, by the way. If I would have been around back then, I would have wanted to go to Altamont before I go to Woodstock. It was a much cooler lineup. The Stones were there. But it was not a cool, groovy, peace and love event. A lot of fights, a lot of injuries. There were deaths. They had the Hells Angels as security. That did not work out well. It was a disaster. And it really kind of put an end that whole peace and love thing. It was over. That show just kind of, I don't know, stuck a fork in the 1960s and we moved on to the 70s. And you know, just a few months later, the Beatles announced they were breaking up. And that was definitely the end. So there was a change in the tone of music from the 60s and the 70s. It may have been subtle, but it was there. I feel like it was less subtle when we went from the uh, 70s to the 80s. Disco had been building and building and building throughout the 70s. By about 77 or 78, it became very commercial. The Bee Gees jumped in. Everybody had a disco single. Even rock artists did. The Stones did it. Anyway, there was a cat named Steve Dahl. He was a DJ in Chicago, and he hosted an event called the Disco Demolition Night at Kaminsky Park. Uh, it was, uh, I guess, early July 1979. 50,000 people showed up. It was a huge event. If you brought a disco record to, to donate to their demolition. I think you got in for like a buck or something like that. Anyway, they blew up this giant box of records right on center field during the game. And there was a riot and it went crazy and everything else. Now, that was the beginning of the Disco Sucks movement. By 1980, it had gone full swing. And if you were an artist who wanted airplay on the radio, you had to convince people that your song was not a disco song. Oh, it's a rock song. Oh, it's an R&B song. Oh, no, it's something else. But they definitely had to change the feel of their music. And you can tell if you listen to a song that was popular, let's say, in the summer of 79, and a song that was popular in the summer of the summer of 80, they have a very different vibe to them. So there was a very abrupt change there. Now, if we move on and we talk about changes that happen later, I would say the big change, and it wasn't like right there in 1989, it was actually... In 1992, the change was Nirvana. Everything went to grunge. All the energy music went away. All the fashion went away. That was a big change there. And uh, I don't know what the change was with the millennium. I guess it was just the millennium. <laughs> but at any rate, sometimes decades are important. Not just because you're going to specifically play within the 70s, because that doesn't always happen. Sometimes you do 60s and 70s or 70s and 80s. I totally understand that. But to understand music and, and, and the feel of music and why this is different from that, it, I think it's a really cool thing to know as a DJ. It gives you a better understanding of music and how it works and, and how music feels and how things are going to go together. So anyway, just a vlog for you. So tune in next Tuesday at 9 p.m. Central. I believe, oh, no, we might be going earlier, actually. We might even go in at like 7 or 8 Central for the 70s. It's going to be a good show. I'm looking forward to doing it. These are a lot of fun for me because, again, I love music. That's it. Thanks for watching. Practice and enjoy.